Hey there, Meg Bolger here from Facilitator Cards. You are about to watch a recording of our Facilitator Brain Jam on Mural. What Facilitator Brain Jams are is they are opportunities where we bring together our facilitator community to uh, explore new technologies and ways we can be creative and innovative with our facilitation. This round, we focused on Mural, which is a digital whiteboard and how we can use Mural to uh, address challenges and come up with some creative solutions. So folks worked in small groups during the Brain Jam to identify those challenges and then to come up with some creative solutions that we could use um, in our facilitations and especially focusing on the creative solutions that Mural could bring. And you're going to see both of the large group share outs from these Brain Jams. So I hope you get a lot of uh, great ideas and um, that you learn a lot from these videos and I hope you enjoy. Uh, okay, all right, everyone's coming back. And I also see us still moving around in the mural. So what we're gonna do in, with this time is, um, you're welcome to keep your Zoom chat over to the side and keep looking at the mural. Cause what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hear some highlights from folks. I am gonna share my screen just so that folks can, um, like when we capture this in the recording, it'll be easier for people to be able to see uh, what we're seeing. So, uh, I'm going to share my screen, but what I'll do is um, I'm going to ask people who were the clients to share out your uh, challenge and your favorite solution, and we will um, get some highlights for some different from the different groups. So if you want to keep looking at the mural, I will summon you all. I can show you what that looks like. Um, so there we go. And we are looking at the orange group, and I would love to hear from the uh, second client, uh, if you would unmute yourself and maybe tell me a little bit, uh, just, you know, in one or one or one minute or so, give us an overview of your challenge and your favorite solution. If you were the Sure, that's me. Um, so my challenge was um, just how do you keep up your own energy as a facilitator when you're not getting those little visual or verbal cues that you might get when you're face to face with people in a room and the um a couple of ideas um were chose that i chose that i liked best although there was a ton of really great ideas were um using images so maybe grabbing some images and creating a mural and then taking people to it and saying you know choose a choose an image that you know represents for you uh, an aha or a question or a challenge or a where you're at in the moment or whatever. Um, and I just uh, have 22 seconds left because I was timing myself, but I also want to say this, um, <laughs> this there's another one there um, where we were using icons to get people to do happy faces or thumbs up or whatever uh, on a sticky note or, or on something that you're using in Mural to give, give you a sense of where people are at or how they're doing. Beautiful. Yeah, I saw a lot of um, a lot of good ideas above too. So that's awesome that you all came up with so many. Um, while we're on orange, can the person who uh, was the first client, would you uh, tell us about your challenge and your favorite solution? Uh, well, my challenge is I'm having a group with uh, different levels of proficiency of managing technology and using their computers and there's people on their computers and their phones. So how to level everything up. And so I, I loved all the ideas and the ones that made it to this step were uh, having homework to practice like we did for the session and to have instructions posted and locked so nobody would delete them <laughs> and have the arrows to direct people to the different sections of, of, this, um, of this mural. And so everybody can find where to go and what to do. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, beautiful. Let's zoom around the mural here. And um, I would love to hear from the green group, the second, um, the second client. That's me. Um, so our challenge was around uh, having enough time to check in with multiple breakout groups. So like we split everyone into 
breakout groups. And as a facilitator, we want to be able to make sure that they're on track and answer questions and see how they're doing. But doing that with 10 groups takes, you know, if each group takes four minutes, that's 40 minutes you've eaten up and there's just no way to do that. Um, so our favorite solution was actually demonstrated by you all as facilitators. Um, we all really loved this like mural pro tips on the side, um, which we felt like we're getting at the same issue in a different way because they were just anticipating what are the challenges that folks might run into ahead of time that would need our immediate attention so that we can provide a clear answer to that and then not have to do quite as many immediate check-ins. Um, and it's not copied down here, but I think pairing that with like, we saw your name, Meg, kind of scrolling over our board throughout as we were working, but you weren't in our room, but we knew that you were still like taking a temperature check of our group, uh, or at least maybe you were, that's how we assumed it was, um, which from a facilitation point, we thought was really great. Cool. So how, uh, if I can ask, like, how did knowing that I was hovering, like, was that comforting to you? Was that like, uh, yeah, tell me about, about that. Um, I don't want to speak for everyone in my group so others can jump in as well, but I think for me it was because it was a reminder that if we needed you, you were there. Um, and we talked about the like call, ask for help thing in Zoom that we knew we could use. We did also say as a group that we wish that there was a way that we could summon the facilitator ourselves in Mural, like call you over for help in Mural the same way that we would in Zoom, um, which isn't a feature yet, but I think I think it was both motivating for engagement, but also reassuring from a facilitation standpoint. Like we knew we had to actually be doing what we were supposed to be doing if you were floating around, but also knew that you could help if you needed it. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, there is, that's an interesting, yeah, summon the facilitator. That would be a cool feature. I don't believe that is a feature. Um, you can ask to be followed, which is just like a general feature, but any, but that would show up on everybody's screen. Um, so that would be very tempting to, uh, and maybe have the opposite effect. Yeah. Um, awesome. And uh, Yellow Group, can you tell us, uh, maybe the first client, I see that you've got some um, selected. Could you tell us about your challenge and solution? So I, I so yeah, my name is Leslie, um, and I was trying to figure out how to um, allow participants to use the mural without um, without breaking it. How how to get people to collaborate without um, breaking the mural, which could be my angst as a facilitator that I've prepared this thing and then people as they're moving things around they're just dragging stuff all over the place. Um, but how to allow them to feel empowered as well. Um, at the same time. And um, this, we, so we had a lot of good suggestions. What I really, really liked though was um, the suggestion of allowing people to break it intentionally. So maybe even creating, kind of like what happened here, we're creating a second board where people get some um, instructions, uh, well, not instructions, you know, it's a second board where people can explore and understand how mural works which is different to the board that we actually work on so that they actually can break it and then move into um structured work afterwards so i really like that cool awesome i saw a, a couple of smiles because maybe uh <laughs> some people were breaking the board during this time and um as you all like you learn you can lock the board and that um, might have been, uh, that'll, that, that can avoid breaking it if you don't want to break it on purpose. Um, uh, I love that idea of breaking it on purpose, Leslie, and um, making that okay when it is okay and then locking things when it's um, ideally not. So the challenge is that we have an in-person training with about 30 folks. That's a one day and it's bookended by activities that are not in person. And uh, with the Corona situation, we've been forced to accelerate our plans to create an online version. And so the question was, since this is a, a, a training that includes some level of culture change and where the feeling and the how of the training is really important, how do we create that feeling of team experience online? And I took two, uh, one because I can implement it tomorrow, well, or on Monday, which was this cool idea of um, instead of getting a hub and spoke of the teacher or the facilitator and all the participants, um, have it start popcorn style 
but when somebody speaks up, the last thing they do is name the next person to speak. So you start to create some of that bond among participants. But that doesn't use mural. So um, took a second choice as well, which uses the bullseye framework itself um, to create an online version of the stand with a statement exercise where each person has an icon or they have a dot or they have something to represent themselves and you're trying to create and see alliances. And uh, the first part of the exercise is either coming up with statements or if the statements are predefined, putting them in a, the bullseye. And then people are to place themselves around that and then you take the discussion from there. That's where we ended. Amazing. Yeah, and I see you all uh, had a chance to start kind of mapping out what that would look like. That's so cool. Folks can see it um, just below. Uh, let's move to, I know you, well, let's move to another group and we'll try to hear from every group and then if we have more time, we'll circle back to hear the second challenge you all tackled. So how about the, um, how about the green group? How about your first challenge? Who was the client on that first challenge? So I, I was the client, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yes, you can. Okay, good. So I was the client for the first one, which was lack of verbal feedback. And yeah, the challenge was that in life, uh, you can get a lot of special faces and stuff like that. So uh, I chosen two uh, uh, interesting elements. One is using drawing to represent to get the presentation how people are feeling or thinking so they will help people that might feel uncomfortable in telling their feeling uh, to express them in a different way and also another uh, point i've chosen is that how to measure the mood um, uh, and measure the emotions uh, and in order to do that on rural you can prepare in advance some uh, uh, some sort of uh, icons or even uh, avatars or why not um, the, the, the animated GIF. And so when someone, when we do a quick round to check how things are going from an emotional point of view, quickly choosing the screaming guy or something else that you understand everybody needs to, to get this kind of feedback. That's it. Thanks, Michael. Um, and Michael, if you wouldn't mind muting when you are, uh, I'm wondering if that might be part of, I'm going to do it. Yeah, okay. I don't know if that's part of the debate or sounds, but I want to try to prevent that if it is. Um, awesome. Thank you for sharing, Michael. Um, all right, let's go to the yellow group and I'll kick it over to your client. So, yeah, I was the client and I was talking about managing on-site workshops with new clients. And um, our, our uh, biggest thing takeaway was not mural specific, but it was about how we may need a bigger team to run these workshops because when you're in person, um, uh, reading the room and running the workshop at the same time is much easier than it is online, um, especially when you have to deal with technical difficulties and managing the online whiteboard and stuff, which is not as easy as scrawling. Um, so uh, having a bigger team and giving them all specific tasks to manage um, was was a solution that I really liked. Awesome. So we have a little bit more time to hear um, some of the other creative solutions people came up with. Because we're on yours, Greg, did you all have any? I see that you had another uh, challenge and a, it, you had a mural specific idea. Was that a totally separate client? Yeah, that was the other Greg. Other Greg, perfect. And, and other, other Greg and mine's uh, cases were kind of, kind of, I think similar in, in the challenge of, of that relationship piece. Um, but you know, and kind of building relationships and, and thinking about what we've learned in a long time of face-to-face -face work and how do we do that online? So, how do you really use? How do you set up the mural like you'd set up a room with, you know, your parking lots, maybe your artifacts from your past meetings and and your you know, your 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 group norms or process goals or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, so using mural both to complete your tasks, but also to to kind of uh, to do what you do um, in the room. Love it. 
Awesome. Yeah, using it like a uh, using it like a room where people are going to see all that stuff when they walk in. Um, awesome. How about the Orange Group? Your second client. So the the second challenge that we had was the same as uh, Michael nonverbal communication, right? How to kind of recreate or at least make up for the fact that you're not in the same room and you're not able to re to rely on uh, nonverbal cues. Uh, we, we talked about a bunch of different things, but I think I, I chose the simplest, most elegant solution, which is something that I would like actually Cecilia to uh, demonstrate because it's a lot more effective that way. Use nonverbal cues through drum roll. Oh, so, so what we do when we facilitate is... Um, is you, you set up the expectation by, by letting them how much time they have to speak. And then as um, they need to wrap up, um, I have a little thing. And, um, and so it shows the speaker without trying to interrupt them. Um, hey, so time is almost up, like wrap up your thoughts. And then as it gets closer, I move it closer and closer to the camera. Love it. I love the, um, that closer to the camera bit is like, that's, that's that extra touch I had not heard of before. Um, all right. We, yeah, we have time. Let's do it. Let's do the, the green group. Your, um, your second client. Tell us a little bit about your challenge and solutions. Um, so that was me and it's really this um, transitioning all the things we do well in person to now that virtual environment and how do you retool. And so the idea um, I liked the best um, was really just to think about all the positives of being in the virtual environment. Um, so things like it being accessible um, to a wider audience. Like, I mean, we're all from all over the country and someone say they're from London here, you know, like, um, so yeah, all of us kind of being able to be in this room together. Um, and then also the idea of it's easier to document and you can kind of work a little bit more um, long term um, using something like mural because um, I mean, I spoke of being a facilitator that carries around the big sheets and the sticky notes from previous meetings, but those really do get um, kind of hard to carry around versus this is something that you can kind of continuously come back to and you still have those meeting notes from six months ago and um, can go back and work on those things. So really just thinking about the positives and how you could utilize that. 